I guess I'll just refer to this one as like building your chassis or something like that. Um, here's something that uh, I feel like is useful to people is, is how to make yourself kind of more robust, if you will, to lift heavy weights, right? You need to have the strength and, and everyone loves to use this word core. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really convinced that core is the best word for it because it's like you need full body stability. You know, it's like, oh, I have really strong abs. And it's like, well, how's your back? How's your pelvis? How's your, you know, there's other things to this. How's your rib cage? So, you know, this whole idea of strengthening our core and doing all this ab work, um, I appreciate it. And, you know, and certainly you need ab work. You wouldn't want to have like weak abs or something like that. But um, there's more to this building your torso than just doing a whole bunch of sit-ups. And um, one of the things I'm going to point out real quickly here is I don't care how I look. Um, so I appreciate the fact that grown men take the time to message me and tell me that I'm not aesthetic um, or that I'm not aesthetic anymore. That's actually how someone framed it. So they pointed out that you used to be aesthetic and now you're not aesthetic anymore. And I'm like, yeah, that thanks, whatever. How did I build the uh, torso, if you will, uh, for lifting heavier weights? So I used to have a really small waist. I have like a like 28 inch waist. It was really tiny. Um, and this is okay because, you know, I ran track and uh, played hockey. Uh, but when I wanted to start getting stronger and lifting heavier weights, and I needed to build in order to be able to hold those weights. Having a tiny little waist is not great for lifting big heavy weights. So this is really quite simple. This is not like anything that's gonna be earth shattering to most of you, but I'm sharing it for the people who maybe you know, don't know. I started doing a whole bunch of things like side bends, okay? That was a great way to make my waist thicker. And I did a whole bunch of unilateral carries. Now, that's really similar to a side bend, if you think about it. You're unilateral, right? So it's one side at a time, but I'm doing an isometric, so it's like a suitcase carry. Or I do like a waiter walk where you hold a weight overhead, but only on one side. I did a whole bunch of unilateral work, um, and that helped me make myself thicker. And in addition to that, uh, doing things like farmer walks and yoke walks. Those yoke walks were great because you really have to brace. Uh, those types of things made my waist thicker. And by making my waist thicker, right, uh, I'm able to support more weight on my back. So, you know, uh, Mike Boyle is not wrong when he says that the limiting factor in the back squat is your back. He's right. I can leg press far more weight than I can back squat. And in fact, actually, even with this whole, you know, rear foot elevated split squat thing, um, the amount of weight I can do far exceeds 50% of my back squat. You know, if you back squat 400 pounds, you can easily do a rear foot elevated split squat with more than 200 pounds. But just because you can do a rear foot elevated split squat with 250 doesn't mean you can back squat 500. Why? Well, your low back is the, is the limiting factor. So Mike Boyle is correct that your low back is the limiting factor. Um, however, I break away from Mike on this one. And he says, you shouldn't back squat because the back is the limiting factor. And I say, you should back squat because the back is the limiting factor. You should, you should want to have a strong back. Um, I can't think of a reason why you would want to have a weak back. In fact, actually being that the majority of people have back pain and, you know, back injuries are one of the number one reasons why people uh, have to retire from sport. It would seem to me that you would want to make your back as strong as possible. So to me, you should back squat because it requires back strength. So anyways, moving forward from this, my point being, okay, uh, it, before you can support heavy weights on your back, you're going to need to strengthen your back. And so, you know, um, side bends, unilateral carries, heavy carries, farmer walks, you know, things like that, yoke walks, those are all great. And uh, dimmel deadlifts, dimmel deadlifts are actually, for whatever reason, I find those to actually be more effective for strengthening my back than deadlifts. Um, I'm sure there's some biomechanics expert out there who can explain that. Like, oh, well, when you deadlift, you're using your legs more than whatever. I'm sure someone else out there can explain it better than I can. But the point being, the actionable step is do dimble deadlifts. Um, and I realize a lot of people are doing RDLs uh, incorrectly. What they're actually doing is a dimble deadlift, but they're calling it an RDL. Um, but if you were to look at a dimble deadlift, uh, well that's what you're doing. So lots of people out there are like, I'm doing RDLs. And it's like, no, that's a demo deadlift, but go ahead and keep calling it by the wrong name. Uh, from now on, when I deadlift, I'm going to refer to it as a bicep curl. Why not? 
You can call it anything you want. I don't squat. They're, uh, they're tricep extensions. Yeah, that's what my back squat is. It's actually a tricep extension. Call it by the wrong name. What difference does it make? So uh, I hope this helps someone out there. You know, that how do you strengthen your back? Yeah, we have to use it. And so you should use it. Uh, side bends are a good movement where there's actually movement. And then, of course, you know, suitcase carries, weight or walks. Those are great isometric, right? You're still moving, but uh, you're locking your back isometrically. It's building your QL. Um, and then, of course, yoke walks and farmer carries. It will really teach you how to embrace your core. And you will find that this makes you thicker. And I don't care. People tell me, oh, you're, you're all thick now. Why are your obliques so thick? And it's like, well, I can still see my abs, so I'm not fat. I just built muscle. And I think that that's a good thing. But if you're into bodybuilding, and that's your thing, though, maybe you don't want a thicker waist. I don't know. Um, but if you're interested in playing a sport, like where you crash into people at 30 miles an hour on a sheet of ice, um, you know, maybe you want to have a thicker thicker torso, protect your spine a little. And if you want to power lift or weight lift or whatever, you want to pick up big heavy things, you want to compete in strong man, uh, you might want to have a bigger, thicker waist. Because function. I don't know. What do I know, right? I'm not a bodybuilder. So obviously the best way for you to train is to do, I don't know, whatever bodybuilders do. I have no idea how bodybuilders train their abs. I should look that up sometime. But the point being, I don't train to make my waist smaller. I train to make my waist bigger. I guess you could do vacuums or something if you want a smaller waist. But if you want to lift heavy weights, you got to build it. You know, build your back. 